And actually, to be honest with you, to be honest with you, when I, I put the, uh, I put my, uh, my presentation uh, for this last year, I was expecting that we're going to be cruising here and doing lots of stuff. But unfortunately, with the, uh, lots of, uh, lo lots of problems with the university and stuff, we didn't start this project except two months and a half ago. So I was debating, should I present or shouldn't I present? Then I decided that I have to present even if I, if I have even five slides. And to, to tell you what, what's going on. So I put something together like in a couple of hours uh, and I said I am going to present. And after, to be honest with you, I saw the wonderful presentations we have today. We had today. I feel embarrassed that I'm going to present for 10 minutes or 15 minutes and then I'm going to open for questions. But uh, uh, it's better than nothing. So anyway, so uh, we started this project actually by, we have been approached by a company in India. And uh, uh, as I'm going to show, show you, the company called Solace. And they said, oh, the biochar right now is, is something very, very hot topic. We need to add it to the concrete. The biochar uh, uh, is, is residual after uh, 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 heating or uh, under big temperature, uh, heating biomass waste. And uh, uh, you wait for it, and then you are going to get some uh, kind of carbon. And uh, with the, lots of uh, 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 research is done to the graphite, adding the graphite, to concrete, then they're saying the concrete is stronger, then why don't we add this? The other one, the graphene, uh, you have to produce it and it's very expensive, but, w but this is natural residual from the stuff. So what do you guys think? We said, that's fine, but we need fund. So they applied for fund and we got a very small fund and they said, that's fine, we are going to start with it and we are going to go ahead with it uh, and see if we can get more funds. But the logistics and all of this stuff going into uh, New Jersey uh, Institute of Technology and stuff, they re didn't release the money except two months and a half ago. So all what we have done is just getting cylinders and testing them under compressive strength. And this is what I'm going to show you right now. Uh, my name is Mohamed Magoub. I'm the Program Director for Concrete Industry Management. Uh, and my colleague is Mohab Hussein. Uh, he is working, he was a PhD student uh, uh, at NJIT and he's working as well in New Jersey Department of Transportation. And uh, this research actually, since it was, uh, the, the, the fund was offered by New Jersey people, so it's following NGDOT uh, uh, specifications uh, with the strength and uh, with the, with the uh, design and all of this stuff. So anyway, uh, uh, as we heard from the previous presenters, the problem with is always the CO2 and uh, uh, the atmospheric CO2, the atmospheric carbon dioxide, as we see here from the climate.gov website, is increasing dramatically, starting from, uh, as you can see from the, in this chart from 1960, until now, it keeps going up. So we need to uh, uh, alleviate or absorb that CO2 from the atmosphere by one way or the other. CO2 is responsible, if you read in this uh, uh, climate.gov, responsible for lots of climate changes. We see lots of hurricanes. We see lots of earthquakes. We see flooding everywhere. Uh, uh, and, and this was not before. And the reason is the increase of CO2. Uh, climate change is a big uh, uh, issue right now, and we need to get rid of it, even with uh, uh, doing the concrete, uh, putting uh, uh, the concrete. Unfortunately, people are thinking that cement is the culprit and uh, every one ton of cement absorbs, uh, produces, sorry, 0.8 to one ton of concrete. And this is re uh, one ton uh, of CO2. And this is, this is correct. But how many, if you look at the CO2 emission, all in all, how many CO2 emitted from the mufflers of the cars? This is 11% of CO2 is emitted from the muffler of, of the cars. So, and, and we are talking about concrete and, and cement, cement and concrete and stuff like this. And actually, moreover, the, the concrete is absorbing some CO2 after that. And the researchers proved that. So if you put something into the concrete that it can take the carbon out, not only that, the biochar actually, not only it has carbon in it, that it's going to save the environment, but it absorbs CO2 from the atmosphere. And I remember Alessandro in his, in his presentation, he was talking about that we need something like this. So here it is. This 
biochar is absorbing CO2 from the, the atmosphere, not only saving the, 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 the environment by reducing the carbon in the environment, but it's absorbing the, uh, the CO2 from the atmosphere. And as you can see, it comes in different uh, shapes and different, uh, depends on the grinding. You can have it from ultra fine to coarse. And it is, if you look at it, it is, it has a, a kind of uh, voids, big voids in it that there is a place always for in, uh, absorbing CO2. So the definition of biochar is, uh, is, is subjecting biomass, organic matter, such as wood, food waste, agriculture waste, even animal and human waste, to, to high temperature, often 460 uh, Celsius, in an environment with little oxygen. This process called pyrolysis. Once we do the pyrolysis, we get the uh, biochar. Uh, so that biochar, we collected and we grind it, and actually we imported it, and this took another time, we imported it from overseas. Uh, the companies are selling biochar here in the United States are scarce, scarce, and we got it from India. So they got us fine, uh, uh, fine uh, biochar and coarse biochar. So the, the general use of biochar, soil amendments, actually that's what they are using it right now. They are using the biochar in the soil because it, it gives the soil aeration and it, it gives it strength. And uh, 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 this is a very important thing, which is carbon. It's called carbon sequest sequestration, which is carbon, we call it carbon sink because it absorbs carbon from the atmosphere, carbon sequestration. So this is the, this is the benefit, the big benefit of biochar. And then it, it, it's used in water treatment because it absorbs gases and stuff. Livestock food additives, again, because it absorbs gases. In water treatment, actually, it absorbs the contaminants. Uh, uh, it's used in composting, and it's used in odor control because, again, it absorbs gases. So those are very nice... Uh, uh, methods and everybody, all other industries, they are using it. And for concrete, we are still not using it that much. So we were thinking about it. How about if you used it? So, so the company applied for the grant and we started it. How about adding it to the concrete, I said. So what is it going to be doing to the concrete? It's uh, going to enhance the properties, strength and durability. It's going to reduce the cracking. It's going to resist the corrosion. It's going to reduce weight. It's going to reduce maintenance cost. Okay. And then the biggest thing is the sustainability and the carbon sink theory. This is going to be dual advantages. Dual advantages because we are going to actually triple advantages if, if it's going to have, if you consider sustainability and carbon sequestration or carbon sink theory as two advantages, then the third one is going to increase the, uh, the durability and the, the strength. Okay. We have been reading about adding carbon to concrete for a long time, but again, as I told you, the carbon is, uh, uh, is something we pay money to produce. But those guys are natural. Biochar, they are natural residuals from burning biomass waste. So here, and with, which you are burning anyway, here the graphene reinforces, this is taken from a UK website, uh, started in UK in 2018, and it says that the graphene reinforced concrete is more than twice as strong as the regular concrete. Okay, those are and, and those are pictures. It's a little bit darker, as you can see, because the carbon is there. So, so we said we will start doing that. So, three organizations, actually four organizations, agreed together. This is Solace. This is the company Solace Ventures, uh, uh, the Indian company, applied for the grant, and the grant called CSIT, which is the Commission on Science, Innovation, and Technology with the conjunction with New Jersey uh, Economic Development Authority. So, and then with the DOT, again, uh, a member of DOT, because we need to get approval from the DOT, so uh, New Jersey DOT, so we can use it in the state before we, uh, uh, we go viral after that. So I would like to thank them for, for, for uh, all of those guys for teaming up with NJIT to start doing the this. The grant, the grant was, is not that, that big of a deal. It was $25,000. So we said we are going to start pilot studies and we are going to test concrete properties. We are going to test the workability. We are going to test the air content. We are going to test the density. We are going to test the strength. It's just to start. Just to start. The material itself we got actually worth $25,000. <laughs> So the material worth $25,000. So I, I got funds from other funds on the side 
to, uh, to, to, to pay for the tests and the students and, and all of this stuff. So we are going to say, okay, we are going to replace by weight or by, by volume. So we, we agreed that we are going to replace by weight. Are we going to replace cement and the aggregate? And if we are going to replace the aggregate, is it going to be fine aggregate or coarse aggregate? Said, well, well let's start re replacing uh, the cement. Let's start replacing the cement and then we are going to uh, uh, talk about uh, uh, the, the fine aggregate and the coarse aggregate after that. So this is the uh, this is the, the the base mix 100 port, uh, we used Portland cement 100 Portland cement uh, those are the components per pound, pounds per cubic yard 660 uh, uh, pounds cement and uh, no fly ash coarse aggregate fine aggregate and the biochar is zero this is the base mix and then the water cement ratio is 0.48 and the water is 320 pounds. And then again, we, we tested the, all those parameters, the slump according to ASTM C143, air content according to ASTM C231, density ASTM 138, and compressive strength we did 7, 21, 28, and 56. That, that's pretty much the two months we did the tests. So ASTM uh, C109. And we are starting with the slump, the slump tests, the slump results. And again, as you can see uh, over there, the mix, Over there, this is the, the base uh, sample, and then 5%, 10%, that's the replacement by weight for cement, 15%, 20%, 25%, and 30%. We went up to 30%. It, looks, it looked very dark, but we said we are going to go over there. So it, if you see the slump was, uh, it, it increases the slump, so that means increasing the workability of the concrete. Although that, I'm, I'm not a big advocate for the slump, to be honest with you. Uh, and I think it's the time to, to digitize all the, co the concrete uh, testing, and I'm working on this right now, because the slump test, the, if, if, if you look this way, it's going to be two inches. If you look this way, it's going to be three inches. Uh, it depends on the human error and stuff, so I don't believe in, in, in slump. But I, again, you have to follow what others are doing. So, so this is the slump uh, values uh, uh, we found. That they, we found that by replacing, we increased the replacement uh, of the biochar uh, to cement, we found that the slump is increasing, Ma means the workability of the concrete is increasing. How about the density? Since yeah, the density is reduced, we started with 150, 148 pounds per, per cubic foot for the concrete, and then after that, once we add, uh, we start adding the biochar, the biochar is, is, is lightweight, the concrete is, is going down, so lightweight concrete, it went up to 117 pounds per, uh, per, per, cub per, per cubic foot. So this is, this is, this is a very light, lightweight concrete. And then the air content, we did the air content and those, those are the numbers and we are not, we are getting the air content increasing. This is anomal anomaly here. Uh, maybe the, when they were measuring it, it's, uh, it's out of rhythm. But those two lines here are the NGDOT, New Jersey Department of Transportation's limits for the air content, which is six, percent plus or minus 1.5 percent so it ranges from 4.5 percent to 7.5 percent so the air contents air content uh, is within the limit until like 15 it's still almost there 15 percent and then after that 20 and to uh, and, and 30 are out of the limits uh, compressive strength the test results we went to the ngdot strength and specifications and we used we used class B, we used class B uh, 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 buildings or class B structure. So they have something called uh, verification strength and they have something called design strength. You are going to see those numbers in our graphs from now on. The, specific, uh, the, the, the verification strength and the testing strength, accepted testing strength for 4,500 uh, PSI. And the verification strength is the, uh, the design strength is the design strength, which is 3,700. This is according to uh, NGDOT specifications, class type B. And those are the, 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 the graphs I got for 7 and 14 and, and, uh, uh, and 21, 28, and 56. Uh, the, the, the base mix is here, and those are the 5% uh, replacement cement, 10%, 15%, 20%, 25%, and 
25% and 30%. And those are the numbers for the, the numbers we, we just saw right now, the specifications for NGDOT, for the uh, uh, verification strength and the design strength. 4,500 and 3,700. And then we go, this is 14 days, and this is 21 days. For some reason, the base actually strength went down. I think there was a problem in the machine when we did those 28 days for the, just the base, for the 28 and the 56. But the, as you can see, when we go to 28 and 56, we can see that up to 15%, up to 15%, up to 15%, it's meeting the, both the verification and the design strength. After that, it's no use. 20%, 25%, 30%. And then we, we, lastly, we put them in a nice graph here to show those are only, we eliminated the base, uh, the base mix. This is the percentage, 100%, uh, 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 how much increase that the mix is increasing the compressive strength relative to uh, the class design strength, relative to the design strength. And as we can see, for the 5% replacement, 10% replacement, and 15% replacement, we are going well above uh, 100, uh, even after seven days, except one over there, except the one over there in mix three, everything is meeting more than 100% the design strength. That means, that mixing up to 15% by char is giving us a good compressive strength of concrete. Then actually, we, are, we have lots of work to do. We are, we are having lots of stuff to do, and we applied for an extension for this grant, and the good news, we got 40,000 after those promising, uh, promising numbers. We, we got 40,000, and we are uh, continuing after that. We are going to actually, um, uh, even before this, we are going to do uh, we are going to do the res 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 resistivity tests, and we are going to do free stow. I'm, I'm, I'm even lenient to do free stow tests, and uh, so to check the durability of this stuff. And we have lots of uh, lots of things to do uh, 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 that that we can check where how far we go for with the biochar. Uh, 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 so uh, we, we we would like to do. Uh, uh, fine, uh, actually I meant to do fine replacement. We would like to do fine replacement. And we would like to do both fine aggregate and cement aggregate. And we would like to do environmental li life cycle analysis. And we would like you to do re uh, uh, durability assessment of, uh, uh, of one and two. I would like to thank all the companies that they were, uh, they were uh, teaming up with us. And I apologize because again, I didn't, I didn't have much to say. I hope by next time we're going to have nice and thorough presentation like our, my colleagues who did before me. And thank you very much. And I'm open for questions, if there is questions. <laughs> thank you. Um, thanks for the presentation. You're welcome. Um, sort of know something about biochar filtered blood loss. So first, one, first thing I want to make sure is like, because you can mention you are using biochar to replace the cement amount, but in the slide, the show is like replacing. You're right, fine. sorry, sorry. Uh, yeah, you are sorry. We are replacing, sorry, I, I apologize. Uh -huh. We are replacing the fine aggregate sand. Yeah, it says sand. Aggregate? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It, right. I, I replace sand, sorry, I apologize. I replace oh, no, sand. No, no. And then the extension, the further work is to replace cement, sorry. I apologize. Okay. The, the other thing is like, what is, uh, what is the source of your biochar? Is that from wood or from agriculture waste, because talking about the chemical composition of that, that would change a lot. Yeah, yeah, I, I wanted to mention that, by the way, yeah, this is uh, imported from India, and it's agriculture. Agriculture waste. Yeah, so of course we have to do the food and, the, and other resources to see if this is gonna, uh, yeah, gonna give assume, the same results. I assume if you got that from the agriculture waste, that means like you're supposed to have sort of like amorphous silica in that, that should have a pretty good bonding with the cement. And my last question is like, I'm pretty surprised to see the, the slump increase once you add more biochar in there, because we know biochar is kind of like a porous. It can, when you mix it, it can soak a lot of water in it. It's kind of like decreases the workability of the concrete. That's a good question. Actually, we, we, we had a problem when we started mixing that, that the water is gone in the beginning. And we kept yeah. looking at the mix, and the mix is turning to be very stiff. 
Mm-hmm. Okay, and this is why we decided to add the, uh, the super plasticizer to, to, to the mix. But again, I asked the students to increase the time of the mix. So the biochar, yeah, it retains the water in the beginning. But you increase the time of the mix, it gives it, gives it back. Okay, so yeah, the abs- uh, 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 biochar absorbs water. And this is, a, uh, or, or uh, adsorbs water on the surface. But once you keep mixing, it gives the water back. But, okay. But this is a big problem for biochar is the water absorption. Yes. Yeah. Probably I can, I can give you the solid spot. Like probably you can just treat it as like expanded shale, just like to. Exactly. So this it. is why we are adding admixtures. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. All right. Good questions. Thank you, Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Any other questions? You can still think about the questions. I'm going to apologize about that. Yeah, the replacement was fine aggregate, not cement. We are going to do the cement after that. I'm sorry. That's a sign of getting old. So anyway, so uh, I'm the one who did this presentation, but I can't believe that I forgot what I, I was putting together.